Welcome back. In this clip we're going to follow on from the issue of methodologies to look at research methods. Unlike methodology, every project will have a different method, but the method will require careful design. A well detailed method should be able to be implemented by someone else. You'll need to have a very detailed record of the method in your project record and in your proposal report the method should be sufficiently detailed to convince the assessor that your method will answer the research questions. You need to, to start by determining which pieces of evidence you will need to prove your overall objectives. Then determine how you will gather each of those pieces of evidence in the manner that will stand up to scrutiny. The website listed here will give some uh, information and some ideas on how to construct an argument in order to prove your case. And in that website it talks about um, the role of data and the role of evidence in achieving that. So you need to think about your method as a way of gathering evidence in order to construct an argument. I'll now go through a couple of different types of uh, method that are typically used in research engineering research projects. The experimental method uh, is one that is used widely across science and engineering. Typically in doing an experiment you want to uh, start off with a prediction or a hypothesis of how you believe the uh, situation uh, behaves or exists and you will be setting out to either prove or disprove that that is the case. If possible you should try and ascertain the variability expected in your experimental results or the underlying phenomena because this can tell you uh, what sort of experiment you might take, what sample size you might need, how many repetitions of an experiment you should do and the accuracy of the measurement required in order to uh, prove or disprove your hypothesis. I would suggest that you should decide how you will analyse the data before you do the experiment because it is only through thinking about the analysis will you know the intricacies of the data and the variables that you might need in order to uh, meet the objectives of your overall program. As you collect the data I would suggest that you do some pre preliminary analysis as you gather it because if the experiment is not behaving uh, as planned you want to know that as soon as possible because you might be wasting valuable resources by collecting data that is, uh, that is not valid because of un some unforeseen aspect of the experimental technique. Having collected the data you will do various sorts of analysis and often statistical analysis. Once again knowing what this analysis uh, will be beforehand will help you design the experiment. Finally, you will collate the analysis of the data with other outcomes and discussion from the literature to prove or disprove your overall goal. There's a website there that gives uh, some further detail on this method. The next method that I want to look at is simulation. In this you are using some sort of uh, usually computer based uh, program in order to uh, explore an area of interest. So you need to decide on the input parameters and the outputs required and that relates back to the research questions you have. Um, based on theory or empirical data devise a numerical model that you can implement. Once you have the model you probably need to calibrate the model in order to uh, show that it uh, matches reality or matches an expect or gives an expected output for a given input. Having calibrated the model you, you should validate the model using an independent set of inputs. 
uh, this will ensure that your calibration is, uh, is valid. Then you're ready to use the model. Uh, you can systematically uh, provide um, artificial or hypothetical inputs or have other uh, data that's uh, gathered from, from other places, for example weather data or other simulation data, and run the model and look at the output. I would suggest a graphical output is most useful because it can um, reveal behaviours of the model that are not obvious by looking at uh, numbers or statistics. Uh, but you should also look at techniques such as um, statistical regression to evaluate the model. Similar procedures can be followed for qualitative models in a simulation. So these might be more thought experiments rather than numerical experiments. Have a look at the resource on Insight Maker for more information on simulation and also an online platform for doing simulation. Questionnaires and surveys are often used. Surveys are primarily used when you want to discover the opinions, values or behaviour of people. This method will almost certainly need authorisation of the Human Research Ethics Committee and therefore has a minimum lead time of around 10 weeks to prepare the application and gain approval. For this reason, it is not normally uh, a useful method for those students that are doing a one semester research project. Surveys that produce high quality data are difficult to plan and implement, so be prepared to uh, spend quite a bit of time in preparing your method and your survey. Some resources can be found at the websites below. Thinking about resources to implement your method, it may be that you need access to labs of the university or to technicians. All teams wishing to use resources such as space, tools, testing machines and technicians in the physical labs must complete a lab fab form and get it approved by their supervisor and research coordinator. The form is available in the resources section of the website. All teams wishing to work in labs must have an OHS induction before being able to access the lab. Once again, talk to your supervisor about this. And finally, finance. There is a very small budget for projects that have a demonstrated need. A fully justified case should be put to the subject coordinator after approval of your supervisor. Risk assessments are also mandatory for some projects. So all activities in labs or field-based data collection must have a risk assessment signed by the subject coordinator to ensure the university's various insurance policies are valid in case of mishap. So what's next? The method requires careful documentation and you should role play or simulate the method using someone not, fam not familiar with the project to see if they can follow it. If possible, you should test a prototype of the method to see if it actually works. You might use a small sample of data or a preliminary experiment to test your method. In the proposal report, your assessor needs to be convinced your method will answer your research questions.